Oh, hi, America. Just uh, looking over my new Vega hatchback, Chevy Economy Plus car. Economy car, huh? Well, economy, sure. According to the EPA, the 75 Vega achieved the best gas mileage figure of any four-cylinder economy car built in America. That's economy. But Vega has economy plus good looks. Plus uh, bucket seats, carpet. That's economy, economy plus. This woman is going to the market to pick up a bargain. A market where some of the items are priced at half what they were a year ago. A market with values you may never see again. And how do you find this market? You see your broker. Sure, nothing's guaranteed, but he can show you the tremendous yields and amazing bargains in stocks and bonds. Right here in the market. Today, there's no better place to pick up a bargain. Alabama has moved 10 men up across the 40-yard line. All backs and receivers, they are in, not all of them, but most of them, anticipating onside kick here by Auburn. With 2.47 to play in the game, it would seem unlikely Auburn would go at this juncture for the onside kick. Not against that happens. defense, Keith, I don't believe. Greg Gillis, now he knocks it deep and knocks it into the end zone. Mike Scott was back there for Alabama. He downs it. And the Crimson Tide will have it at the 20-yard line. Auburn going for the two points. Charles Hanna was the man who put the heat on Gargas and made him throw the ball sooner than he wanted. And uh, at the end of the 72-yard drive, the Plainsmen are down by four, 17 to 13. Now, the Auburn defense, which has been heroic in the second half, the pressure is on them again because they have got to hold Alabama and make the tie turn it over. So it's one more time for the defense. Richard Todd hands the ball off to Shelby. And Shelby doesn't find much. He goes from the 20 up to about the 22. He has 71 yards in the ball game. Leading ball carrier in the game is Auburn's Cedric McIntyre with 100. Let's watch number 91 just to the upper left of your screen. Dick Callahard again. Defeating the blocker, Rogers, moving to the ball. He's had some afternoon. There are two timeouts remaining for Auburn, and uh, they took one here, so they have one timeout remaining, which really means that if Alabama can make a first down, they probably got it wrapped. If they do not make it, we've got a ball game. 76 Olympics will soon capture the attention of the world. America's very finest athletes competing in the game with members of the U.S. Olympic team. Here's how every American can help. $5 today, if you will, to the U.S. Olympic Committee, Box 1976, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118. In appreciation, you'll receive a colorful embroidered patch commemorating America's participation in the 1976 Winter and Summer Olympic Games. $5 to the U.S. Olympic Committee, Box 1976, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts, the zip code 02118. All right, the ball is at the 22-yard line for Alabama. Second down and eight. Auburn is in a 4 4. Todd keeps it. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Buried right there. Edmonds and Lanier. 99 and 98 make the stop. And Bear is frustrated. Yeah, it looks almost as though uh, Bama is not going to risk any pitches here, Keith, or anything of that sort. I may be wrong about it, but uh, with that time, as though they knew they were going to keep the ball and not take any chance on fumble. Shook Jerk facing the sideline, along with Bear Bryant on the other side. And the clock runs at 2.05 to go in the ball game. Third down and eight. Todd coming down the line, getting good blocking. He's at the 25. He's down at the 27. It'll be fourth down and three. And it was a great play by McKinney and Fuller at the clock. And I think he, he was down inside the field of play. So the clock is still running at a minute and 40. It looked to me like he was out of bounds on the play. And they said no, and uh, the clock continues to run. Alabama taking its sweet time. They'll use all of the time allotted to them as the clock sticks with a minute and a half. Auburn needs a big run here by Fuller under the punt. Rod well, Nelson is in the kick. Remember that block of two years ago. High snap. Kick it away, goes to Fuller. 
this one gets back to the 49. 28-yard punt, four-yard return. One minute and seven seconds to play in a ball game, and Auburn is down by four. They've got one timeout, basically push the sidelines, but many things into the middle of the field, and have to line up very quickly or use that last timeout. Alabama undefeated, top ranked in the UPI coaches poll, ranked second behind Oklahoma in the Associated Press poll. If you are curious about that, the coaches vote in the UPI poll, and the sports writers and broadcasters across the country cast the ballots in the Associated Press poll. Vargas is one for seven with one interception in his passing. He tries to hand the ball off on a reverse and stumble, and Alabama recovers it. It is Mike Dubose, number 54, who penetrated, got in between the quarterback and the wing back, and he just simply stole the ball. You've been looking for that play all afternoon. It's been a very successful play for Auburn earlier in the year. The end around play for Dan Newton. Let's take a look at it again. You can see Dubose, they're right with him, and he's there to have the ball handed off by Gargas to him because he was inside of Newton as he tried to pull to execute the end around. Big, big defensive play by Alabama. Unless lightning strikes, the party is over. With a minute to play, Alabama has the ball at the Auburn 44-yard line. And the Crimson Tide now will just run it out, forcing Auburn to spend its last timeout. The Tigers have no more timeouts. And you see the time remaining in the ball game, 55 seconds. Bear Bryant talking to his quarterback, Richard Todd. Todd coming back off the field. ABC continues its Thanksgiving weekend coverage of top NCAA college football games. Tomorrow it is Army and Navy at 1 Eastern time from Philadelphia, one of the great traditional football games. And then at 5 Eastern time, John McKay against Era Farsigian. The USC Trojans against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. That's at 5 Eastern time tomorrow over most of these ABC stations. Watch the DeVos. fumble play again. You can see DeVos cutting inside of number 80. That's Nugent, the tight end for Auburn. The end around play called, and Gargis didn't see him. He handed the ball to the first man who was there, which was the bowl of Alabama. And Alabama, as we go back to live action, sets the clock moving now with 50 seconds to play in a ball game as Todd takes the snap and just sits down. He took a two-yard loss on the play, and for Shook Jordan and the Auburn Tigers, they have played well. They have played very, very well. They were a couple of times appeared to be on the way to a route, Keith, and each time they rallied, came back to stay very much in the game. The defensive unit, however, was just glorious in its effort. The Auburn kicking game broke down. That pretty much the difference in the ball game. As Auburn was unable to mount any kind of passing attack to speak of. They had the one big pass play as Alabama takes a five-yard penalty for a delay of game here. Auburn had the one touchdown play call back because Gosson, the wide receiver, was bumped and then stepped out of bounds, and that nullified the touchdown. And Bud Wilkinson and I are sitting here searching our minds for the offensive and defensive players of the game. I rather like uh, Tellyard of uh, somebody along that Auburn defensive front, I think, deserves the most. And I would say let's go for 91, Tellyard, as the defensive player of the game. I would certainly agree with you, Keith, without any question. I think the man who has made the difference offensively in the ball game, really, with his brilliant handling of the option offense out of the wishbone for Alabama was Richard Todd, the quarterback. He would be the offensive player of the game. And this 39th meeting between Auburn and Alabama is done. As Trip Jordan walks across the field to shake hands with Bear Bryant and Bear. Carried across the field of each stroke, the Alabama Crimson Tide will go against Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl, 11 and 0. Auburn will go against Texas in the Gator Bowl, which you will see over most of these ABC stations with a record of 9 and 2. It was a great football game, a sad game for the followers and the faithful of the Auburn Tigers. But they played a fine ball game. Auburn University receiving $1,000 reward from Chevrolet for its general academic scholarship fund. The University of Alabama also gets a $1,000 scholarship in the name of Richard Todd for their general academic scholarship fund. It was an outstanding example of what college football is all about. 
and another victory for Bear Bryant walking proudly off the field. And his mind is already looking forward to playing against Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. Final score, Alabama 17, Auburn 13. Hi, Texaco asked me to show you some little things you can do to save on fuel oil costs this winter. For example, have your heating system checked once a year. Turn your thermostat down at night when you go to bed. Check the weather stripping leaks and install storm windows if you can. And keep the damper in your fireplace closed when you're not using it. Energy is valuable. Please don't waste it. Running out of gasoline isn't the only way to get stuck on the road. With a gasoline problem on your mind, you might be overlooking your car's other needs. Your independent Texaco retailer stocks top-grade tires, long-lasting batteries, and a complete line of quality automotive accessories to help make sure you stay on the road, not off. We're working to keep your trust. The Chevrolet offensive player of the ball game, Richard Todd, quarterback of the Alabama Crimson Tide. I thought he was brilliant in operating the wishbone, and the defensive player of the game is Rick Talyard, defensive tackle for the Auburn Tigers. And so that moon looks so bright and gold for the folks of Alabama, and it's not much of a dancing moon for the people from Auburn. Saddest word of Hunter Penn, Keith, always this, it might have been, and if Dawson hadn't been pushed out of bounds, it might have been for Auburn. No question about it. The executive producer of NCAA football is Rune Arley. Today's coverage of the Auburn-Alabama game was produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, Bill Morris, associate producer, Doran Smith, associate director, Roger Goodman. Our spotter, Jerry Klein. Now this is Keith Jackson along with Bud Wilkinson and Jim Lampley saying so long from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Coming up, the college football scoreboard show. Left provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. There is a new spirit, a new look in the friendly sky. Catch the spirit of friendship service. NCAA football, Auburn and Alabama, brought to you by Chevrolet, builders of the 1975 Chevy Vega, Chevrolet's little four-cylinder economy champ. By Texaco and the many thousands of independent Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. By Tipperillo, Tipperillo, the mild cigar that makes everything you do look a little better. And by United Airlines, catch the spirit of friendship service to 113 cities throughout your land. Once again, our final score, Alabama 17, Auburn 13. Preceding a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Doris Day, Dick Van Dyke, and George Goble join John Denver Sunday at 8, 7 Central.
two football games across the land today. And when the dust is cleared, the meaning is this. Alabama is the undisputed champion of the Southeastern Conference. And it will be the Bears of Baylor going into the Cotton Bowl for the first time in 50 years. Good afternoon or good evening once again, everyone. I'm Dave Diles in New York. A limited schedule today, but a very meaningful one. And we are now 60% through of ABC's big holiday weekend of college football action, starting off last night with Penn State and Pittsburgh. The Penn State Nittany Lions headed for the Cotton Bowl to play Baylor, defeating the Panthers of Pittsburgh by a score of 31 to 10. And this probably means that Penn State will retain the Lambert Trophy, emblematic of Eastern football supremacy. Then let, this afternoon, in the first game of our doubleheader, it was Texas defeating Texas A&M by a score of 32 to 3. That means that Texas A&M was going to sit home on New Year's Day, and that means that Texas will go to the Gator Bowl. And we'll be back here in New York right after this brief timeout. Sears is having a holiday sale of Golden Comfort shirts. Save on classic look shirts like Bob Greasy's Ombre Stripe, fashionable lighter solids, or dressy scatter prints. Save on neckwear, too. These stretch-woven Dacron polyester and cotton shirts are Sears best. Regularly $9 and $10, now $6.97. The Golden Comfort shirt holiday sale. It's a stylish way to save. At Sears Men's Store and in the catalog. Welcome. This is Goodrich, not Goodyear. Some folks get confused. But Goodrich made the first tubeless tire in America. Goodrich made the first American radio. And now, Goodrich makes the fixer. The only steel-belted radio that fixes most punctures in the tread up to one quarter inch in diameter. Pardon. Perhaps now we could see the famous blimp. The fixer will make our name easier to remember. Well, the Auburn-Alabama battle is a college football classic. It was contested this afternoon down in Birmingham. We hope you enjoyed the telecast. Let's switch now back to Birmingham, Alabama for another report on that game at ABC's Jim Lampley. With me is one of the seniors on the Alabama football team. There are only 10 seniors in the top 44, Randy, so there aren't that many of you. You had 91 yards, and it's just a matter of finally getting to carry the ball a lot, right? Well, I had a lot of good block. I couldn't have done it without We had some great holes over on the left side in the second half. And uh, I think our whole offense played a great game, and our defense was great, too. The Auburn defense had a fabulous game, especially stopping you guys inside the 10-yard line twice. They really seem to toughen up when you get close to the goal line. Yeah, they, they got a real big defense. They played a super game, you know. I'm just glad we hung on and won it. Was it as physical a game as you played in all year? Yeah, it's pretty physical. <laughs> Randy, we talked earlier in the year, and you talked about the fact that with the shuttled system and so many backs running the ball for Alabama, you only got to carry it three or four times a game. Tonight, you finally got your hands on the ball several times and were able to reel off some long runs. Do you think it gets better the more you carry the ball? Well, I don't know. Like a lot of people, it takes you a while to get going, you know, and it seems like at night, you know, when I got warmed up a little bit, I, I was lucky and had, you know, some pretty decent runs. But like I said, it was some great holes over there. Anybody could have ran through them. Thank you very much, Randy Billingsley, who did the job on offense. Another man is with me right here. Another senior did a whale of a job on defense. You heard Keith Jackson call his name several times, linebacker Ronnie Robertson. And Ronnie, we talked to one of the men who wore your number here at Alabama, Leroy Jordan, during the ball game, and he said there's a little difference playing linebacker against the beer. You really have to come up quickly. That's true. When they uh, run the beer off tackle, it's uh, sometimes pretty hard to defend. But uh, we've worked against a lot of beer teams this year, and uh, we've had a lot of experience with it. And uh, we played it pretty well today. I guess well enough to win. That's all it can. Ronnie, on two occasions in the first half, Auburn had the long drives down into your territory, got a touchdown out of one of them, a field goal blocked on the other time. You seem to be having trouble, especially picking up the fullback on the field. That's true. Uh, we were having a little mix-up on our assignments there. And when the uh, defensive backfield coverage changed, there was a change in who was picking up the beer then. We had a little trouble uh, getting that straightened out. Ronnie, it's a cliche, and I said it before the ball game, but you said it again when you came over here. You can really throw out the books when these two teams play. That's true. It's a great rivalry. Uh, it doesn't matter what either team's done beforehand. When they come down to here, it's dog-eat-dog, dog, and uh, it's always a great team, and I'd like to... Uh, say congratulations to Auburn. I thought they did a great job. They were a well-coached team, and uh, they really cared to fight to us, and uh, it was a good ball game. Ronnie Robertson, Randy Billingsley, 17-13, Alabama a winner. Now let's go back to Dave Dial. All right, and two traditional games tomorrow coming up on ABC. Army and Navy, and after that, Southern Cal and Notre Dame. We hope you'll be on hand, and we'll be back after this.
Tools are my living. I use 3-in-1 oil to help prevent rust and keep my tools working better and lasting longer. Here's a tip. These two workmen have identical saws. We'll wipe this one with 3-in-1 oil. 3-in-1 oil with Luber Shield makes the oiled saw slippery, so it cuts easier and faster. 3-in-1 oil also makes screws and nails go into wood easier and faster. Use 3-in-1 oil to help prevent rust, make things work better, last longer. When the bug first came to America, Champion had the right spark plugs, ready and waiting. Now, Champion's original equipment in lots of Volkswagens. In fact, more European car makers install and recommend Champion than any other spark plug. And Champion's the number one selling spark plug all over the world. So if you've got a Volkswagen, any Volkswagen, remember, for your next tune-up, we've got your plug. Once again this winter, ABC Sports returns with the very best in sports television. January 5th marks the season premiere of ABC's Sunday, Wide World of Sports, when you'll see one of the greatest fights in history, Muhammad Ali's stunning upset of heavyweight champion George Foreman. Remember, throughout the winter, ABC's Wide World of Sports on both Saturday and Sunday. The Superstars also returns January 5th. Bob Segret and Kyle Rote Jr., past champions, will return to defend their titles. But there will also be a team competition matching the teams from the Super Bowl against those of the World Series. Also, there will be a women's competition and a special celebrity superstar. The American Sportsman also returns Sunday, January 5th, and again will take you around the world for sport and excitement with such celebrities as Lee Marvin, Richard Boone, Red Fox, Bing Crosby, and Phil Harris. The Professional Bowlers Tour will come back Saturday, January 4th for its 14th consecutive season on ABC. Howard Cosell Sports Magazine also returns Sunday, January 19th, bringing you a behind-the-scenes look at the stories and personalities of the sports world as only Howard can. Also, another full season of the very best in golf on ABC begins with the Bing Crosby National Pro-Am Championship January 25th and 26th. So remember, beginning in January, a very special season on ABC Sports, the recognized leader in sports television. Okay, that final score once again down at Birmingham this afternoon. The Crimson Tide of Alabama 17 and Auburn 13. 38 straight year in which at least one team around the country completes a regular season in perfect style. In the final minute of the first quarter, Alabama, second and 19 from the Auburn 45. Here's the quarterback, Richard Todd, hitting Willie Shelby. With a little swing pass, and Shelby, with great speed, goes right past the Auburn defenders for a Crimson Tide touchdown, and Alabama, after the point after, leads 7-0. Here we are, second quarter, two minutes gone. Danny Ridgeway kicking a field goal, 36 yards in length. Alabama's lead is now 10 zip. But as Jim mentioned, this battle, well, the records mean nothing. So Auburn comes back, a 12-play, 71-yard drive, capped by this one yard plunge by Cedric McIntyre, and Auburn now trails by a score of 10 to 7. Now, 51 seconds left in the first half. Chris Wilson of Auburn trying a 21-yard field goal, but Leroy Cook of Alabama blocks it. And Alabama goes to the locker room at the half with a lead of 10 to 7. Midway through the third period, Calvin Culliver, the Fleetman from Alabama, 13 yards and a Bama touchdown. The tide going 80 yards in eight plays, and the score is now 17 to 7. Auburn coming back with an apparent touchdown pass from Phil Gargas to Thomas Gossam, 41 yards. One of the officials ruled that Gossam was bumped out of bounds by an Alabama defender and is not able to come back on the field to make the catch. Fourth quarter, three minutes left in the game, and Gargas caps a 72-yard drive of a two-yard touchdown run. Now, Auburn tried for two points, but Gargas was rushed hard, forced to unload the ball early. His pass incomplete, leading the score at 17-13, Alabama ending Auburn's hopes of an upset, and Mike DeBose stole Gargas' attempted handoff with a minute left in the game. The final score, Alabama 17, Auburn 13. So Alabama still undefeated. Its record is now 11-0. And Oklahoma, which plays Oklahoma State, is 10 and 0. We'll be back. Come here, son. Yeah, Coach Eubank. You didn't use your head on that play. Let's sharpen up your strategy a little. <laughs> the name of the game is Monday Night Football, new from Aurora. So challenging, you could train on it. It's a total football game with tricky, intricate strategies programmed on computer cards. You put your cards in the slot, and the game computer shows you how you did. Good call. Monday Night Football from Aurora. So challenging, you could train on it. 
What does a man really want for Christmas? A man wants a gift he can use. Say something about Aqua Velva. A man wants a gift he'll enjoy. An aqua Velva and a real beer stein. And a fishing reel decanter with four lures. There's something about Aqua Velva. In a humidor. Cool, refreshing Aqua Velva in sportsman's trophies. There's something about an Aqua Velva gift. Well, we remember sitting in this studio last September and telling you about a game that was scheduled that night between Arkansas State and Southwest Louisiana. But what we didn't know about was Hurricane Carmen, so they had to postpone that game, and they will play it tonight. Arkansas State with a record of 6-3, and three, Southwest Louisiana with a record of 2-8. and eight. Now, Arkansas State has a heck of a kicker. His name is Joe Duran. Last week, he kicked a 63-yard field goal, and that, my friends, is an NCAA record. Now, that wasn't his most important field goal of the game, though. Later on, Joe Duran kicked one from 56 yards, and that enabled Arkansas State to defeat McNeese State by a score of 22 to 20. Let's take a brief look at the top 10, of course, and where they're going. Alabama now with a record of 11 and 0, having defeated sixth ranked Auburn 17 to 13. Number two ranked Ohio State's Buckeyes headed for the Rose Bowl battle against Southern California, which plays Notre Dame tomorrow. Number three ranked Michigan will be home on New Year's Day, and Bo Schembechler doesn't like that. Thinks the Big Ten ought to send other teams to other bowls. Number four and number five, one of your battles tomorrow, Southern Cal and Notre Dame right here on ABC. And, of course, uh, we have some other top ten teams. Uh, the ratings have changed all season long, and sometimes it's difficult to keep up with them. Number seven, Texas A&M losing today to Texas by a score of 32-3, to and there probably will be more juggling after this. Number eight, Nebraska headed for the Sugar Bowl against Florida. Number nine, Penn State, of course, the game you saw last night, 31 to 10 over Pittsburgh, and Penn State headed for the Cotton Bowl against Baylor. Number 10, North Carolina State, with a record of 9 and 2, will be in the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl against the Cougars of Bill Yeoman down at Houston. We'll be back in New York right after this. Last month, I'm touring Beaumont Plantation, looking very aristocratic in my Van Q. Kiana shirt from Van Heusen. Suddenly, the Southern Belle screams, Archibald, you come back! I told her I'm Paul Poe. She says, Archie, honey, the colonel has passed on. I told her I'm Paul Poe. She says, now all of Beaumont belongs to you. Well, I told her. Oh, the sun shines bright. Van Q, Kiana, dress and sports shirts. Only from Van Heusen. To get the most mileage from a new set of tires, you treat them right from the start. We didn't do that. First, we ran a set of Sears steel-belted radios on the toughest back roads in Morocco. Then we put them on American roads. 72,400 miles later, they're still going strong. The Sears steel-belted radio, it can take a lot and still go a long, long way. Radial design, two steel belts. The Sears steel-belted radio, only at Sears. We have some great bowl matchups we know you're going to enjoy right here on ABC. Starting on December the 16th, the Liberty Bowl at Memphis, Tennessee. Maryland, 8-3 against Tennessee, 6-3-1. The Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl at Houston, North Carolina State, 9-2 against Houston, 8-2. That's December 23rd at 9 o'clock in the evening. And then the Gator Bowl at Jacksonville, Florida. Auburn with a record of 9-2 to play Texas. That's on December 30th at 9 in the evening. And then the Sugar Bowl at New Orleans, Florida, 7-3 against Nebraska with a record of 8-3. That's uh, New Year's Eve. And don't forget Wide World, Janet Lynn, tomorrow. We know you're going to enjoy that program, surrounded by the two great football games. And we're happy that you've been with us on a long weekend, and we've got more to come tomorrow, and we hope you'll be with us then. This is Dave Diles in New York. The college football scoreboard was produced by Bob Goodrich, directed by Jim Jeanette, technical director Bob Bernthal, associate directors Lou Frederick and Dave Malinowski. Tomorrow on ABC, join us for another NCAA college football doubleheader, the 75th Army-Navy Classic, followed later by a confrontation between number five Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and number four Trojans of Southern Cal, beginning at 5 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. The college football scoreboard has been brought to you by Aurora, makers of the ABC Monday Night Football Game. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. NFL Monday Night Football moves to Miami, Florida this week as the Cincinnati Bengals meet the Miami Dolphins in a crucial interdivisional American Conference game. The Bengals, behind the passing of Kenny Anderson, the AFC's leading quarterback, will be looking to stay alive in the AFC Central race 
or the defending Super Bowl champion Miami Dolphins suddenly find themselves tied for the AFC Eastern lead and need a win in this must game to keep pace with the Buffalo Bills. This is Frank Gifford inviting you to join Howard Cosell, Alex Karras, and me for NFL Monday Night Football this week at 9 Eastern Time on most of these ABC stations. The $6 million man is stranded on the ocean floor when an enemy patrol boat severs his air hose. Tonight at 9, 8 Central. Right after, watch Kolchak, the Night Stalker. That's tonight at 10, 9 Central, here on ABC.